You are currently tuned into the report card. Solo Domingo. Domingo. If you want to crown them, then crown their <laughs> But they are who we thought they were. It's going to be your biggest episode, and we ain't even started yet. And you know this, man. It's showtime. Yo. Yo, yo, what's up, people? Yo, what's going on, man? This is the we- report card, man. This is episode 11 of the report card. Yep. It's Drake Week. Drake Week. How you doing, Solo and Mingo? The new 11. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing this week, yo? Um, maintaining, bro. Same old, same old. Yeah, man. Yeah. I ain't heard no no other music other than Drake this week. Yeah, I, you know what? To I, talk about. I gave him my ear for the week, so I wanted to make sure I gave this a correct grade. I made my correct comments. I did my studying. Because, you know... uh. I ain't want nobody coming from my head. <laughs> so you it's, know. it's gonna happen anyway, man. I, I guarantee people ain't gonna agree with everything we got to say. I'm sure, I'm sure. But you know, they ain't gotta agree with everything. Right. All right, man, you ready to just go ahead and jump into oh, it? Um shout out to uh Royce though. Royce um, oh, yeah, doing Royce, his thing um, number his one hip hop album right. in the country, man. Shout right. out to shout Royce out to the that. 5'9, we, yo. We told you it was a dope album. Yo, y- y- y'all need to go check that out. And if uh, you got iTunes, man, just go ahead and buy it. And if you got Apple Music, man, it don't you know it ain't costing you nothing. Just just check it out. Right. But let's go ahead and get on to it, man. Drake, he's a Canadian artist from Toronto, Ontario, which is in Canada. His mother is a teacher, his dad was a drummer for Jerry Lee Lewis. And um, skipping ahead a little bit, at the age of 15, he started acting on a Canadian television show called Degrassi, The Next Generation. His name was Jimmy Brooks on the show. At around 19, he put out his first mixtape, Room for Improvement. And then he uh, followed that up the next year with Comeback Season, which got in the attention of Lil Wayne and a couple other people. He had a bidding war. Then he got a $2 million signing bonus. Yep. And then uh, So Far Gone came along. And uh, what do you think about So Far Gone? Um, so Far Gone was uh, very new and very different for the time. Um, it, he showed lyrical skill on it. I think it was dope. I, I liked it. Um, like I said, it was different for the time. And it was very new. You know, this guy it was a new voice. And um, he, he, it was a new talent. So it caught your ear. Um, you know, it was soft. A lot of R, you know, R and B style, but you know, um, I mean, it, when it came out, though, I want to do, I do want to say, like, it was a breath of fresh air. Oh, definitely was. There was so saying. much it was BS. So new. It, it was, was so, so much new. BS, right? You know, in the industry at that time, that when he came out with this, it was like I remember D hit me up, VVS. He, he, man, he be up on all the new music, yo. Right. He hit me up. He was like, yo, check out this Drake joint. And I was just like, yo, Drake, I remember Drake, man. He always on Trey Song's tracks. Right. And uh I heard I heard the mixtape, man. And I I fell in love with it, man. This is uh this is a great first introduction. I think this is the only thing that Drake has that is a whole classic project. I, I don't I don't know if I feel it's a classic but I feel it's a very good introduction. It's a great introduction, actually. Um, and at the time, there wasn't people sounding like this. There was nobody really doing this other than Trey Songs. And he wasn't really doing this on albums. He would do this like on mixtapes or on freestyles or whatever. Chris Brown also, but... Um, but nah, when, when he uh, first uh, came out, we, we thought it was like kind of like Trey Song S cuz cuz like you said Trey Songs was doing all of this on his mixtapes is what he was doing. Well, there's also a cat uh that's a little similar. I think his name was Ryan Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, he was a little similar. So Ryan Leslie? Ryan Leslie, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. That dude is an animal, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> he does production also, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Unfortunately, he hasn't worked with Drake yet. Okay. But maybe maybe that's coming in the future. I love every song on this joint. Um unfortunately, the version that I'm referring to is not the version that you can get on apple music or anything like that you got to go download the mixtape the album version the ep version that he put out like a year or two later it only has seven songs on it and it had two additional tracks it was five songs for the actual mixtape and then it had i'm going in with jeezy and uh little wayne which right. was a dope track and he yeah. got fear and he went in on that joint yeah he and did his thing um yeah like i said it was uh you know I, don't get me wrong i'm not dissing the cat he is very tender and soft but um it was dope like best i ever had it was like it was dope like it it was so well put together and well written like you I can't mean, deny Houston, it. Atlanta, Va- like I, I don't skip a song on this joint like and when i say i don't skip a joint like 
I can stop at any song on this joint and just listen from that point. Right, pick right back up. Yeah, yeah. It's I kind of like agree on a it, point, but it's, but I, I don't think it's a classic. I see, uh, you know, he had a he had a good uh, good amount of features on it. They all did their part on it. Every every feature uh, held held down their weight, you know. Yeah, I mean that that's just the thing at, at the time. I mean, he was new act. He had everybody. He had Little Wayne. Everybody was trying to mess with him. I mean, he was the new big guy, big guy in town. What what grade did you end up giving it? I gave it a ninety two. Uh, that's an A minus. That's amazing. So I, I think it's an amazing project. I gave it a 96. I think it's a classic. And I, 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 like I said, I think this is the only project that you can consider a classic from Drake, to, to be perfectly honest with you. Okay. But the, uh, keep it moving, man. Thank me later, man. What, what's your thoughts on Thank Me Later? Uh, I like Thank Me Later. It's a very good first album to follow up So Far Gone. Um, he did a great, it was a great follow up. He has good production. Again, he has a good features more rounded this time it wasn't just uh Lil Wayne heavy he has a uh, you know Alicia Keys he has Nicki he has T.I. and Swiss um he has The Dream he has a verse from Jay I guess you know Jay felt like he already proved himself uh or proved somewhat that he he, he deserves a, a verse I mean, <laughs> yeah I mean Jay Jay was dealing with anybody that would put out anything dope at the time at least I'd say that but I love Thank Me Later is actually a dope like you said it's actually a dope album to follow the mixtape I, I think this was 40 40 did a great job on a lot of the production Boy Wonder Kanye West you know everybody that helped contribute to this album No uh, ID Yeah yeah I mean all the guest appearances were perfect right. for all of the songs Alicia Keys this is actually a Swiss Beats feature I actually like because right. a lot of his <laughs> a lot of his features I'm not yeah, really a huge I, fan of I, I can agree I like this one also I love his production though and I'm surprised they didn't give Mary a credit for for the little bit she did doing the song but like I, I will say that when I first heard the album though I wasn't a huge fan of it like it took a while for me to get into it 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 was kind of like me having to listen to it over and over again and I will actually say that that's a common occurrence with Drake and me like when i first hear the pro so far gone was the only one first time i heard i was like yo this is great i mean well yeah I, what i was about to say kind of negated what you just said i was gonna say because it's not loud like he not you know he not smacking you in the face it's kind of like mood music you kind of got to be in this mood yeah well well just just to give you context like i like the songs where drake is going in like uh say what's real on so far gone i like uh, the joint uh, with ignorance shit with him and uh, Kanye West. I not uh, where they Lil rapping Wayne. over the Jay Z beat. It's right. uh, him and Lil Wayne. Yeah, and they going in. I like the calm. Like I like songs where he's like. And then he kind of did it on over. He kind of did it on lights out. But on this, uh, you know, you kind of get it on unforgettable a little I, bit. I like it on, on. I don't think so, but I like it on the resistance. Like the resistance, oh, I, yeah, I really he, like he did on what that. he did on the resistance. I like how he killed Miss Me with Lil Wayne, but overall i feel like these are just really great songs that he bunched together it, he didn't i don't feel like he went above and beyond on a whole bunch of the tracks here right i can agree lyrically it's not uh above and beyond but i don't feel like that i feel like that about drake period i feel like he, he has good wordplay but i don't feel again he, he's a great artist don't get me wrong but i don't feel he's a lyricist we we know we kind of know this but people kind of get it twisted and want to say it's nothing wrong if you're not a lyricist you know yeah I mean? I mean he got he got some punch lines he he has bars but he, he's, he, slick. he's not he's he's not as like well thought out about it as some of the other artists I, I mean don't get me wrong it flies for this generation right. but if you compare him to like a lot of the rappers in the 90s it's kind of hard that he's not going to get a lot of the recognition that you would give some of them rappers from the 90s because their bars were a lot more harder thought out. Drake, do, he, he does come with a couple of those though. Every once in the blue, he'll come with one of those really, really hard bars where it's just like, oh, that was that was tough. I mean, um, he's a slick talker. He's like, he's quick from um, Harlem Nights, you know what I'm saying? He got that slick talk like. Yeah, pretty witty. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, but what, what you give it for a great? I gave it a 90, man. I, I think this album is fire. I gave it a 92 again, it's amazing. Okay, so you think this is like on par with so far going? It's along the same line. 
okay we can, can keep it rolling man take care drake's second album and this is what most people i'm not saying i do this is what most people consider his greatest work i i'm gonna have to agree with that why um uh i feel like he was definitely feeling himself by this album like the the previous projects put him in a space where he he felt comfortable like you could see how the way he started the album um how he was talking the way because i spit hot fire right <laughs> <laughs> he just started talking crazy and um you know i think the success from his previous work got him that comfortable um hands down i think this is drake's best work the intro was hard i love ugk um lord knows lord knows is the hardest song on the joint right him other, and ross other, killed or, that other that that or or the ride i, I it, like that too that's what i'm saying like this this by this time he started really feeling himself and really reaching lyrically and really really rapping like this is probably the album he rapped the most to me well and he had i think this is the album with that the most singles yeah it did it, it had a lot of a lot of songs that charted here um i, I will say like um a lot of the I, I think the production on this album is great uh it's like the last album when i first heard it i wasn't a huge fan like headline drake singles usually don't hit me hard like that like i, I didn't like started from the bottom i didn't like headlines when i heard over i thought the hook was corny but i thought the verses was dope i thought the beat was dope uh same with pop style and and one dance same with you know all all his singles that he puts out before the album drops right. i'm not usually impressed like but i love the zero to 100 i like i like jodeci featuring j cole i love uh like all of these songs that he, my darling with little wayne a lot of these songs don't even make it out for people to actually hear and those songs go way harder than some of the songs that he actually puts out um i do think this is a great album though right. i will say i will say that and i i will actually go ahead and, and put on record i do think this is his best work it, it's pretty consistent there's no songs up here that i skip right you know what i'm saying the weekend you can hear the weekend influence on a couple of the tracks and, yep. and they sound beautiful shot right. for me uh you know uh, crew love the ride like a lot of those songs man it at this Camera. time, the, I believe at this time the weekend was still fairly new, so he was still, you know, well, the weekend was working with Drake right. at this point. Right. So yeah, yeah, they, that because Drake kind of helped him break. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, his so, deal basically. Yeah, so it, it was only right. I mean, Marvin's room was dope. Like the R&B songs on this album, I are pretty honestly dope. feel this is um his best. It's best put together. Even not just the best work, but even put together how it was like lined up. Uh, the song lineup. This uh, album, I think this album could have been closer to a classic if he wanted to did so many songs. I think he he felt he had something to prove on this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like he had something to prove on the first one, and the first album was impressive. I feel like he came back with something to improve, well, not, prove on this one. On the also. first one, it was proven, like, you know, I can be an artist in this game. But on this one, it was more like, yeah, knocking me for singing or for being soft, you know, or for being kind of tender. Yeah, like he, he said in Lord Knows, I know that showing emotion don't ever mean I'm a pussy. Know right. that I don't make music for niggas who don't get pussy. So right. those are the ones I bet on to diss me and overlook me. Like, right. he, so he, so he started it. addressing those issues. So, But that's, I, obviously, that's Drake at his best, though. Right, but obviously he heard the buzz. So he heard yeah, of that, course he you know, it. he heard what was going on, that it was a good album, but he's not considered a rapper. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, uh, I, I don't know, man. You know, you ain't got the answers, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't got all the answers, <laughs> but I will say that I, this is Drake's best project. I gave it a ninety-three, a. I think it's an amazing project. I, I do think so far, going is a better mixtape, but album-wise, I think Take Care is probably the better album. What would okay. you give Take Care? I gave it a ninety-five. That's also amazing. Okay, that that's that's pretty close to a classic, man like i said um the only reason why i think he doesn't make timeless music i believe drake's music is hot today tomorrow for the week maybe for the next two weeks but <laughs> you know after that i'm not saying there's not good music when you go back and listen to it you'll be like man this is good music but it just it's not timeless like you, you it, you're not hooked to it yeah I, I feel like if there's no 
I, I like like certain songs put me in a certain time period in life. Right. Like I remember what was going on when that song came out. And so far gone is the only Drake project that actually reminds me what was actually happening at a time I was listening but to the music. Because it was so fresh and so new for the time. Like you said, fresh fresh air. If so far gone would have been the second, third project, you probably would have been like, Man, this some more bull. It's the same I, I don't know, exact man. sound. I don't I don't know. Cause it's it's a great out. I, I it, it's a great project. Right. I don't know. I, it's it's hard to say. You know, I, I don't I don't really know how to you know, but uh, nothing was the same. Right. Drake's third album. This is uh I think in my opinion this is where he started actually trying to do more stuff on his own. He kind of cut back on the features a little bit. He only had you know Johnny Aiko, Magic Jordan, Detail, Hove. And uh, two chains and big uh, shine on uh, all me, right. but for the most part, you know, he kind of cut back on the features. He didn't do like eighty features. And um, man, Tuscan Leather that that was a hard way to start the album. Yo. Yeah, that was tough. That was tough. Again, that's uh, another song, like I said, where he goes on. You know, he gets to really vent, I guess, and you know, kind of lyrically get off. And that, that's kind of where I think he's best at. Yeah, that, that's definitely where he's best at. And then furthest thing, I look and, and I find it funny because it's number two, and I put it in the same area that I put uh, the the joint. Man, I can't remember what the what the joint is from the first album, but uh, I also put uh, "Shot for Me" and uh, oh yeah, the uh, karaoke. I put furthest thing in the same category as those. That's and it's funny that all all of them are number two. And it's got that dope vibe that he he found out, and it's a it's a nice pocket for him when he makes R and B songs. Right. Like I said, started from the bottom. I feel like the radio forced me to like that song, cause I I wasn't a huge fan of that. Uh, Wu Tang Forever was cool, but like when it comes to this album, Worst Behavior, that's I love that song, man. Like that's one of my gym joints. Uh, I will say the language in 305 to my city. I do not like those songs. I, I don't like the fact that Drake wasn't being Drake. He was being Amigos. Like, he had just came <laughs> off that Versace right. feature. And all of a sudden, you know, he's sounding like the Amigos. I well, don't know. But, 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 like, I mean, like you said, this is the one that he was kind of standing on his own because he cut back on the features or the weekend help or whatever the case may be. Uh, I don't see a little Wayne feature on this either. So nah, that, I think yeah, Wayne's only on after, after this album. Um, after Take Care, Wayne's on. If you're reading this, is okay. I, if it's too late, right. and uh, that's that's it as far as albums go right. on his his albums. Um, I like the joint uh, with Janie Aiko from Time. Yeah, right. I like that joint. I think they did their thing on it. It has a beautiful, amazing, calm sound, and she did her thing. Um, vocally I mean it's dope you know he he uh, addresses family issues on there I, I love pound cake you know you could take hold off of pound cake if you wanted to and it's still a crazy yeah, I, track I, th I think Drake did his thing lyrically on that um if it wasn't for Hove's and my and my bias um like on Hove uh Drake would I would have said Drake killed that track we, he did his thing but then I think Hove overdid him you know what I'm saying and you but, know this Man, <laughs> but it's whole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yo, pound. Like I said, pound cake. All me, and um, like worst behavior when Drake Drake's getting super braggadocious, Tuscan leather. Like that's Drake at his best. I I don't feel like at his best as a rapper. I still do think that this album was a step backwards. I, I gave it an 85. I still think it's a dope project, but I do think it was a couple steps backwards in the wrong direction. What What did you think of this album? I gave it an A, a 93. That's amazing again. You, you think this album is amazing? Well, that's that's what the grade system it falls under. I think it's uh, an A. Uh, okay, I, I I definitely don't think. I mean, I, I'm pushing giving it a B. Like, <laughs> like don't get me wrong, the lyrical content is there. But it, 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 for some reason, this album just doesn't work for me, man. It's 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 him going away from him, and it's okay. It's okay to grow as an artist, but when you start, you know, swerving in the, all the other people's lanes and doing what they doing just because they hot, I can't I can't get down with that, man. I mean, um, I'll further explain my my gradings on the on the albums at the end after we get through views or whatever. So okay, well, if you're reading this, it's too late. The album that was supposed to be a mixtape 
first and then uh the whole thing with baby and wayne came out and it just seemed like drake was in a rush to get out of his contract so we switched it to an album right. and it was supposed to be a dj drama hosted mixtape and so what do you think of if if you're reading this is too late this this kind of caught me from the start man it starts out with some hard some hard joints some good production and you know he's he's rapping like on this one again he, he's like you know i'm always knocking the fact that he's so soft and tender you know he actually rapping so i felt like you know he's shutting me up i think this was our introduction into trapper drake right <laughs> and, and uh i want to say i i hate trapper drake <laughs> i mean like i said um club music gym music car music uh I, I never really deny that and then especially if it's somebody that's giving you that but with some kind of lyrical t content it's not like they just mumbling like you can't deny it so i was definitely i was rocking until the quentin miller's accusation yeah man that that, that was kind of unfortunate i mean don't get me wrong uh i don't think drake did any ill will with that i mean a lot of artists use reference tracks you know what i'm saying I worked at Patchwork Studio. I saw, I'm not going to throw any names out there, but I right. saw artists right. use. Right, we're going to keep it clean. Um, yeah, I saw other artists use reference tracks. Right. Artists that are platinum artists. And then, cause just because they're getting in the studio, they're in there every day, all day. And then, you know, you get writer's block. Right. And it's not like they steal and they just have an artist come in, play a song for them. They just may need then, the flow. Yeah, and they, and they get the flow to start them off. And then all of a sudden, their juices right. come back. They make a great track. You know what I'm saying? And the writers don't care. The writers got to get paid, too. You know right. what I'm saying? The producers got to get paid, too. The arrangers got to get paid, too. This this isn't just... Yeah, it's just it's not just an uh, uh, industry just for the artists and the producer. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people behind the scenes that get paid behind this. Uh, I do... I, I want to say that uh, I'm not a fan of this album. Like, I, I, I don't like Trapper Drake at all. Uh, I think the production on this album was lazy. The bars are still actually there. I'm I'm not yeah. gonna lie about that. The bars are there, but I feel like the production for this album was lazy. And I'm pretty sure if it was a mixtape instead of an album, I'd probably give it a completely different score. Right. But I I felt like the name is the name of the album is, is if you're reading this is too late. I actually bought the album off iTunes before I actually you know even yeah. read the name of the album. And I felt like what it should, what it said to me is, if you're reading this, it's too late to get your damn money back. Because <laughs> I wanted my money back after I heard this joint, yo. And to this day, like, I, I still don't really care for this joint. I like, I like uh, 6 p.m. in Dallas. I like uh, Know Yourself. You know, I like the the joint where uh, you and the six jungle right. is jungle is okay. That's that's pushing it. <laughs> but I, I just feel like a lot of this album is just like throwaway tracks that he could have really just gave out for free and right. i wouldn't have been so mad if i right but um to be fair to him you know the game switch kind of transition and he 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 came in in a uh, at a time where the game was transitioning himself so he kind of lucked out with that but then the game started transitioning again and he changed with it he adjusted kind of adapted to what was going on so i get I, I give him credit for that i ain't take nothing away from that you know what i'm saying it's I, Again, I couldn't deny it because it was a uh, club, gym, car music that still had content. It wasn't like he was mumbling or making car noises. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Screeching uh, or whatever. He was he was rapping. So yeah, yeah. I mean, he still was rapping, but I still think like Madonna. I hate that song, yo. Like I don't know what he was trying to do. It, it, you know, it's like he started doing. This. But we we can find that maybe throughout all his work, it feels like Drake has a bunch of fillers on his albums like like yeah, we spoke yeah, about yeah, yeah. you know well, what i'm saying a lot a lot of them are pretty much bumped up fillers like since it's drake it's not necessarily considered filler it's like you listen to it enough you'll like it right and, I, and I i agree or oh, if the radio plays it enough you'll like it but it still doesn't take away the fact that it's their fillers Okay. Yes, but what would you? I gave this album a seventy-six. I think uh, I gave it a C. I think this album is average. I think it's borderline. It's it's right there in the middle. It, it's on the verge of being a solid album, but it's it's still average. Man. A seventy-six. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I gave it a ninety. You you gave this album a ninety? Yeah. Shit, I, nah, I'm not doing that, dog. I mean, I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to knock him again on the accusations. That that's the only reason why I. 
I was a little turned off from it. So the grade would have been lower if I if I take that into consideration. But I'm gonna take it into the fact that he's an artist and not a rapper. And like Kanye West gets help, you know, a lot of people get help. So yeah, man, I'm telling you, man. When, when I heard this album, man, man, this some more bullshit. Yeah, man, that, that's really <laughs> how I felt about it, yo. Like I ain't even gonna front, man. It, it it's just. It's, nah, man. I, I'm not. I'm not really feeling this album, man. And uh, what a time to be alive. Drake and Future's joint album. It came out a couple months after. If you're reading this, it's too late. I am not a fan of this album, man. That's some old bullshit. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Like, I think this album is the definition of trash. But I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Future is whack, yo. I don't understand <laughs> what it is that people like about this duo. I, I don't. I'm. I'm talking about the mumbling future where he just start repeating himself, and he ain't talking about nothing, man. No, no content, no substance. His bars be below average, and people be getting amped up over this. I mean, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I don't. I don't 100 agree because I personally like this joint. Um, again because he's rapping they're rapping um they you know uh if it's club music like i said before club music gym music with content car music with content that i could actually understand i could vibe to um you know i like digital dash to start off was dope then uh big rings man this this, this dropped around the time our job won won that championship the uh the football championship Oh uh, yeah, I don't care about none of that. Yeah, stuff. of course, man. You know we don't care about that. But now, they, them them people came back to the to the to, to the school playing this whole album on repeat in the gym, bro, and it was crazy. Like the whole album just but playing the, it. I, but man, we talking about 16, 17 year old kids that probably never heard Elmatic before in their life, so right. they don't know what a real MC sounds like. Right. But this is what I'm saying. Uh, I don't think the music. What you're grading it on your perspective on talent skill songwriting uh you know metaphors bars on those things because you being an engineer you being in the studio you seeing the process on different no, artists. That, that's just that's just how if, if i don't think you're good at what you're doing that that's pretty much what it comes down to right i've but actually saw i've actually went back and i listened to future's album honest and I start, and I actually like that future. All right. But but this future, they gonna think we won the Grammy. They gonna think I won the Grammy. What the fuck is that, dog? I like, understand. You know, excuse my language. But right. what what is that? <laughs> I understand, what, bro. What is that? But now, think about it like this: a person that doesn't have your insight on how the process is made, how someone can put more effort into music. They, they basically like a novice to it so they don't even know how you could go in the studio say two three things and stop it and go do whatever and come back say two three things and that sound cool to you some people don't know this they don't know what the finish what the process is they just know the finished project you get what i'm saying so to them they like this sounds dope and every time he makes a hype song and a hype song they, they just like future on fire like how can we deny it you know what i'm saying but they don't know how easy probably his recording process is. You know what I'm saying, man, it ain't got nothing. I'm really happy for you. I'm let you finish. It ain't really got nothing to do with that, yo. Like real talk, <laughs> I don't feel like Future puts effort into the music. Like my whole thing with music, when when we was coming up listening to music, everybody wanted to be the best. I don't feel like Future gives a flying whatever if he's even considered one of the best. I've heard some interviews with him and he's talking, you know, he's talking about how he wants to get money, feed his family. That's cool. That, that's what everybody should right. aspire to do. But with this music, everybody wanted to be the best, yo. Everybody called themselves the best. Who who raps now that says they're the best? But Drake? It, but it's just like basketball. It's a lot of people lost their passion in it. Um, not a lot of people just doing it for the money. Some people I understand, get what I'm saying? They tell you sign this, get your family out the hood, and I'm saying we gonna do it you know what i'm saying but it's it's like like basketball it's a lot of more friendships now it's not i don't hear too many people calling themselves the best well, and if they do they do it out of 
the subtle the subtle yeah i'm supposed to think i'm the best nobody's really like on their mike jordan like yeah i'm the best like god damn it i like the way you do business <laughs> yeah yo now nah, I, I agree with you sports i think it's a little different just because it's a whole bunch of minorities playing in the league owned by all almost but 31 owners or white owners and of course you're gonna be friends i gotta bond together you gotta stick together right music is is a little bit different like these dudes got their own labels and such don't get me wrong i do know they got parent companies and stuff like that but for the most part future and i, I hate this i hate to admit this but future I don't hate to admit the Drake part, but Future and Drake are considered the top of rap right now because they're the most marketable. And, and, and Future doesn't even rap, like, but but it's oh. about the money right now. It ain't even about like I don't want to diss nobody, anything like that. But like you, you've seen and heard the music we have reviewed in previous weeks and what go, comes out every other day. I, I don't even know. I, I, I asked Nino. I'm like, yo, bro, like not even to be funny. How do you even click on some of these names? Like maybe Lil Uzi Vert. Maybe that mixtape is dope as hell. That's some old bullshit. <laughs> maybe that mixtape is dope as hell. But for me, that I got to find, like I'm not being negative or anything like that. I just got to find it in me to click on Lil Uzi Vert like i just seen that that i seen the top 10 uh freshman double xl cover yo, and i'm seeing some yo, dude with yo. red beads in his head i went and, and like, listened to ev- a song from everybody on that cover man that's some old bullshit <laughs> True, tru- <laughs> truthfully speaking man i did not hear anything appealing if you guys heard something from any of them cover guys please email me i want to hear something well nino says According to him, Little Uzi Vert mixtape is as good as Kush and OJ from Wiz. Man, this some more bullshit. <laughs> Come on, man. Man, I, I don't know, man. Like, maybe that was a reach to try to get me to listen, but I don't know, man. Cause I don't know, man. I, I don't know how some some of these people. You ain't got the answers, man. I, I don't got the answers, man. I don't. But I, some of the names these people come up with. These oh, I can if you didn't even give your name some kind of content and idea of why your name is your name it, or it, anything. It, it started. It started with Uncle Murder. It's like why would you name yourself Uncle Murder? Like yeah, okay. If you're a dope rapper, cool. But Uncle Murder, like you can't expect a kid. Like I, I was a kid getting my mom to buy these albums for me, man. You know she she probably had a hard time buying me. It's dark and hell is hot. But if I and her uncle murder album she's gonna be like <laughs> i got hell a, no i'm I got not fine i got a funny story behind that man my man golf here the block be killing me with saying shit man nigga said yo he seen an interview when they asked plies why his name plies oh yeah 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 you're well, talking he's, about I, I put a grip on people like plies nah well i didn't hear that one maybe maybe it is the same interview but i heard the story from him i didn't really hear the story myself he said Plies said his name is Plies because it plies to everything. Aw, oh, come on, Plies. Man. <laughs> man, I was crying, bro. I'm like, nah, man. So that's where we at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I gave this album. I, I, I basically didn't score. This joint is an F. It's trash. It's below 65 to me. What, what did you give this album, man? Man, I liked it, man. I gave it a B plus, a 90. Uh, yeah, we we far off, man. I, I know what some people are gonna be saying. You think you could do this to me? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, co- I, it coming for your head, the ball, man. I, I don't care. It, hey, what a time to be alive is trash. 30 for 30 is the best song on the album, and that's when Drake's at his best. Scholarship like is 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 barely passable. I like that too. I hate it, jump man. I don't care if Taylor Swift is singing it. I don't care if it if it goes hard in the club. The you song hate. is jump man, jump man, jump man, number up to something. I believe Later. you hate trap music. Nah, but nah, you know nah, what? No, 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 no. I, 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 I fuck with trap music. But I, I just don't like trap music when the people can't rap. Nah, and Future can't you know, rap. You know what I thought about the other day? Well, sometime this week. Trap music transitioned itself. Because it's not even trap music no more. It's like club music. I mean, they it's got a like whole bunch of genres music. now. You got trap soul, and you know. You know. That, that's what it seems like. It's trap club, or trap strip club, trap gym, <laughs> because it ain't like we ain't getting motivation one on one trap music anymore. Nah, not necessarily. What's going on now is what Gucci was doing for such a long time. 
You know what I'm saying? And um, and then if we gonna like this and praise it so much, then I gotta shout out the big homie. I gotta like what what Gucci been doing. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was listening to him, but I wasn't giving him ultimate credit. But then seeing that he's the father to everything that's going on, then I gotta say he is the trap god. And I, I thought I, I thought Gucci was whack, man. But I will say you ain't got the answers, man. I ain't got the answers. But I, me personally, I, I never like Gucci, man. I think, and we, I don't like anybody that he's put out. If if we got any kid listeners, they're gonna say we getting old, man. <laughs> uh, nah, nah. I mean, I, I like I like wasted. That's yeah. where it stops. I like Gucci's verse on 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 a couple of verses where he's guest appearance. Him and Wayne's track, it went hard. Nah, I don't, I don't you ain't know. like it. Uh, <laughs> views, man, views. Yeah. <laughs> The talk of the town, people saying this is the greatest thing since cheese was invented, man. So, you know, people are loving this joint. Since jeans were pockets. Yeah, yeah, man. What, what do you think of views? Uh, I, I don't, I don't think it lived up to the hype. Um, I think he tried to make a classic album. Um, he actually put effort into trying to make a classic album. Um, it was also well promoted. I, I, I feel like he was setting it up since uh, if you're reading it, reading this, it's too late with that whole six God and the whole setting for Toronto with the I'm whole. I'm really happy for you. I'm let you finish. Hold, hold on. One quick question. Do you think Future has ever attempted or even cared to even attempt to make a classic album? Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, I can't say for sure. No. But maybe not because what well, he's his formula is working. You get what I'm saying? Why would you change up what you do? And 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 that's the whole thing because a lot of people don't like certain basketball players because they ain't got the passion, right? Right. And and, and that explains why I don't appreciate his music. Right. I don't feel like he's trying to be better. He's just trying to sell, make whatever. It no no effort. But I will do. I, I will say I think views is actually pretty good. I think Drake got back to his roots of what actually made him actually good and in, in trying to get back towards what he was doing on the first two albums. Right. Um West um Western Road Flow. First time I heard that song, man, had to play it back like a couple times. Like right. and views, the song views. Those those songs are Drake at his best. Where he's rapping, right? Yeah, when he yeah, when he's you know, keep keep the family close was dope. Hype, I thought hype was all right. Um, I do like some of the slower songs too. Fire and Desire is a dope one. Uh, um, Controller, uh, Controller, and One Dance. I feel like he was trying to get in, get in on that vibe, that vibe that Rihanna got used will work. Uh, shout out to Party Next Door, you know. And um, I hate Grammy. I'm pretty sure you can guess why. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, I know he got a lot of slack for taking um, uh, the Jamaican cat Poopcon, Popcon, whatever um, his name may be, off that One Dance. Yeah, well, he at the same time, he, he took he took Hov and and, and uh, Kanye off of pop style, and at the same time, that was actually a great idea because yeah. it was just like Hov only gave us two bars, right. and Ye's verse was cool, but Drake's verse that he replaced it with was actually better than his first verse. He should have changed the first verse too, in my opinion. I actually like Redemption uh, with you with Party Next Door. I don't know, man. Like I'm trying to, I'm still trying to get into that song. It's just. It's a filler. That's one of those. Yeah. Where, where after you hear but, it a but couple he's times, to do you're gonna something like different, it. Different though. He is trying to do something different but on that. Peep, peep this. I got a question. You feel that this album gave you uh, insight on Toronto? On it gave you a view on views. I mean, on the city. It gave you a point of view on the city. All point of view of what he feels your views. Western Road flowing views. The songs. Those two songs. Right. Other than that, I mean, I've never been to Toronto. I don't feel like I've gotten... I mean, from listening to his music over time, I've heard, you know, what Toronto may have to offer. But right. from this album, it, it, I mean, it was it was Drake. So you, you, you say... You could, I, I, he could, I got a couple views of his exes. He, he, could, he could get a... Um, he could have named any other of the album's views. That's my opinion. Because it's basically the same thing. It's not like he... I don't feel anything. like his. I don't feel like any of his albums' names have made any sense with the album. Right, but this one he made it seem like it was though. Like this is what he was aiming for to give you his view on the city, 
you know, well, bring, the way you I you, took it, bring you through the ghetto without riding around. Well, you know the way saying? I took it, I took it as 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 him like recording this in the city, and because the other albums, like the second, like Take Care, was recorded a lot of, uh, most of it was recorded in Texas. Like he even said it in one of the songs, you know. I'm, I've been recording H Town in case you wonder why my my song, you know, the songs yeah. sound like the way they sound. Right. And I feel like this was actually recorded in Toronto, so that's why we get the vibe we get. Um, how how you feel with you uh with you with me, where he uh pretty much sampled uh two DMX songs, what these uh what these bitches want from a nigga, and uh how's it going down? I personally didn't like it. I don't know how X. It's probably gonna speak on it, or, or if he's even gonna speak on it, or it doesn't even matter. What's I saw a video where but, they said he was cool with it. Oh, uh, probably. I know personally he has said I mean, he don't like Drake. He's gonna get a check. That's probably why he's cool with it. But personally, he said he didn't like Drake's music, and um, I I I don't know. I felt like it threw me off because it was like, man, like he's using a lines from a, such a an aggressive rapper, and he's nowhere near. It just threw me off a little bit, like. It, it, uh, I got a good point you made um, earlier this week when we were talking, though, uh, when you mentioned that he's like, he may be the female Aaliyah. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I think absolutely. I think he is definitely the female. God fe- damn it. I like the way you do <laughs> I, I, No, nah, I do think he is the female Aaliyah. Right. Seriously. Like, when I had mentioned it to my wife, I was like, yo, what do you think of the idea of Drake being considered the female Aaliyah? She laughed and she's like, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Because... Neither one of them have like a lot of range right. to go with their voices, but they always make it work, and it always sounds a pretty great good. sound. Yeah, great sound. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. I, I still agree with that. I do know the album's gonna do very well numbers because apparently all the numbers that Hotline Bling, Pop Style, and One Dance have made, generating from spins, I think Hotline Bling alone equals up to eight hundred thousand copies sold. Supposedly, uh, so I've he's gonna it. do like some crazy numbers this week. I heard something about him selling over half a million already. Yeah, he sold like, like they they said six hundred thousand the first week. Six hundred thirty thousand. And, and like I said, that. Hotline Bling, they said it's gonna be retroactive. So all all the spins is getting since it came out, right. since it's on the album. They said it equals out to eight hundred thousand under the new formula that our our RIA uses. So. We're looking at close to maybe two million first week, and uh, that's wow. that's gonna murder that's any hip hop artist. They said he already passed Beyonce. He's working right. in streams. Uh, that's that's pretty crazy. Shout out to Drake, man. His marketing, his marketing, planning, all that. You know, they geniuses over there. Whatever they doing is working. Yeah, man. Um, I gave this album an eighty-eight. I think it's fire. I think it's it's in there between uh, "Take Care" and "Thank Me Later." And it's but it's better than nothing was the same, in my opinion. Uh, I do want to say something. I know some of this stuff is bashing Drake, but I just want to point out to the people, I love Drake, yo. <laughs> I, I love Drake's music. I just I'm just one of those people that I just like to be honest right. and and tell you how I really feel about a lot, uh, like a lot of these artists. I want the truth. You can't right. handle the truth. <laughs> right. So so I, I want to I want to keep it real and tell the truth about how I really feel about the artists and. And, and not be afraid just because, you know, they're so heavy, fan heavy, to speak your mind. And I think that's the same thing I face because that's the thing. Everybody knocks me to think I probably don't listen to none of his stuff. And I got all of his work and listen yeah. to all of his work. Yeah, I, I, buy, I buy all these albums. I do not like Future. I will say that. I, I do not like Future. Like, I, I respect Drake's, post, post Drake's honest, work. Post honest. I don't want to hear it. But Drake, yeah, Drake is cool. I don't respect that they consider him a top rapper or a greatest rapper of all time or, or in this anywhere. generation he's gonna be considered that for, for this gener- but not if a rapper he, let's if, say if Drake artists. was in the 90s I don't know if you'd consider him one of the best lyricists it, cause nowadays other fans base it off of other stuff like you know people are gonna look at the the Meek Mills thing and be like oh man he won that battle so now Drake's on a higher but no none of that stuff matters how is the music What's the music sound like? It's it, it, one thing about life, man. Timing is everything. Yeah, yeah Drake's timing is impeccable. It it, it, it it was impeccable how he even hit the scene. Because how I said earlier, we had acts like him before. But at the time, the way the hip hop game was, there was no there was no no lane for him. So they didn't really they got their little sh- uh light, you know what I'm saying? They did their thing, but they never blew up. Like Ryan Leslie, dope, dope artist. Cause 
give you sing, can sing, can rap, can produce. But at the time he came out, or at the time he got his real opportunity, the rap game was more J driven, X driven, Ja Rule driven. You get what I'm saying? Or whatever, where. Well, Ron Leslie is ahead of his time, in my opinion. Right, but this I, is what I don't I'm think saying. people are going to catch that. Drake doesn't fall in that category because Ron Leslie plays like. 30 instruments so. no, no what I'm saying is Drake had impeccable timing because Drake is comparable to Ryan Leslie in uh, music no 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 Ryan, not, Leslie, not talent, Ryan Leslie can sing he, he has more range than Drake and not like he makes his own music he, he produces his own music so Drake Drake he's not producing his music he's, he's just rapping and singing and he's getting a lot of help ron leslie does all this by itself and then he does it for other artists too you know so i don't i, I think that's a little bit of a stretch to compare him against, to ron leslie you, you know because that's like comparing him to babyface but babyface writes he produces he plays guitar piano and a whole bunch of host of other instruments like he's the male Aaliyah. right Aaliyah didn't play no instruments no nothing all she did was sing all drake does is write and sing <laughs> i dig it i dig it so <laughs> what what did you, what grade did you give it you didn't mention your grade the, I, I haven't mentioned it for a reason um the reason the, the grade took a hit because of the expectation i was expecting different i was expecting a classic and um i got what i heard before thank me later take care you know so um it's i gave it an 87 it's actually the lowest grade i gave any of his albums and i think it was more because of, because of the expectation it was a letdown so as i'm listening it's more it's like man like like i'm listening to a western road flow it's like man he going he rapping but i'm like you in the six same track the rod same track Tuscan Leather, same track. 5 p.m., a.m., whatever, Dallas, Houston, New York, whatever, same. You get what I'm saying? So it's like. 9 a.m. in Dallas, 6 right. p.m. in New York, what? Yeah. 5 a.m. in Houston. Yeah, all them time zones, all that. <laughs> but, but all of those joints go hard, though. Yeah, no, all you, them joints they go hard. do go hard, but what I'm saying is, it's the same sound. It's the same thing. It's nothing new. He didn't I'm, change I'm, I'm going to try what Royce did real quick. Hi, Rihanna. I love the I love the uh, Rihanna song, the Too Good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Then um. I had a question. Let me see. I wrote it down here somewhere. Oh yeah. I got a question for you, man, and for y'all listeners, man. Has Drake peaked? Have we gotten the best of Drake already? Before this album came out, I would have answered yeah. But I actually think the album is okay. When I played it in the car, we was, you know, yesterday when we were riding around, I think this was probably my seventh, eighth time listening to the album at this point. That was my wife's first time. Uh, she told me to turn every song off. But like I said, in, in my opinion, I feel like you have to listen right. to Drake for it to grow on you. He kills guest appearances. Dude murders guest appearances. Almost all his guest appearances are great. All of the off songs, like I said, zero to a hundred. Joe to see, um, man, it's just too many songs to actually remember. My darling, all of those songs, man. Some of them will be on the playlist. Y'all guys check out the playlist this week. Uh, it's it's, it's just Drake's. In, it, he's in a weird spot. Like he is the master of what the situation is now in music, and then he has the machine of Apple behind him. Right. He can't. He can't fail. Like like I said, uh, like I told you earlier today and earlier this week, um, him and him and um, Future, the most remarkable <clears throat> artists, is, um, right now, most uh, eight, you know, they you can market them in any way. Any way. I just heard they had a VIP uh, first five rows, thousand dollars, thousand dollars. You get a seat in the first five rows. You get a towel, a OVO, something, a pen. You know what I'm saying it's like, yo, I watched a video. And they got um, the same thing for future. And then you would think like, where, where's J. Cole's or where's Royce? But but, or, or but hold on, Them people dudes, that can rap. You rap. can't say J. Cole. J. Cole sells out concerts oh, yeah. worldwide. I don't I don't mean it like that. I mean it like the recognition. Like even I understand he 
he he even chose not to go commercial because he didn't promote his album like that. He had no features. You know what I'm saying? He still sold. He still sold out concerts and he still sold albums. We need to we need to jump on those bandwagons when things like that go on. Like let's give credit to that. Like no, no, I totally agree with you. A lot of that has to do with fans not having the knowledge. Uh, like you know we got a couple people at work man like Antonio and, and people like that and like I always play songs for them like I play Technon featuring T.I. you know on the Bible right. never heard it they heard the joint and they were like yo why don't they play this on the radio this joint is crazy right and I'm like yo the the radio don't got no interest in playing Technon Technon is 100% independent he keeps every single dollar right. that so <laughs> since he is not owned by a label the labels are pretty much all in cahoots with clear channel because they're all under the same ownership all you got to do is follow the fund follow the money right. the labels are owned by the same people that own the radio that own the record labels and all of this so they're getting basically paid to play their own records they don't have any interest in playing an outsider's records i mean i understand it's a business you get what i'm saying people got to eat people got to get fed uh you know what i'm what i'm saying is let's just like let's open up business a little wider you get what I'm saying? Let's find ways that independent artists could get spins. Also, I, I'm sure that, like, <laughs> I know they're getting spins on the internet and they gain love on the internet and all that. But um, let's find ways for, you know, maybe maybe find ways to vote on underground cats or a big show like some uh, Summer Jam or something. You know where. But that's part of the reason why we made this podcast. Right. So we can let other people know, like, yo, there are other artists out here. Right. That, I mean, that I, really I, go in. People that really love this. There's been weeks that I tell people tune in that, you know, that I haven't spoke to previous previous weeks. And when I, you know, it might land on a week where we reviewing Anderson Pat. You know what I'm saying? And they be like, who? Be like, why y'all not reviewing, uh... But Drake. yo, that boggles oh, me. Anderson, yo, Malibu is one of the best albums I've heard this year. Right, and I can agree with that. And you don't hear no songs on the radio. None. What the hell is going on? I, it's a business. I, that's what I'm saying. We just need to open up business a little wider. No, you turn on the radio, you're going to hear Drake. You're going to hear Future. I, I hope you don't hear a little Uzi Vert, but you might hear it. You probably don't And you don't shouldn't start be hearing to. that over Anderson Pop. Right. You shouldn't be hearing Lil Uzi Vert over Royce the Five Nine. You shouldn't be hearing Lil Uzi Vert. Like these dudes got substance. They got bars. Like why is Pusha T not on the radio? Right. Like yo, what, what is going on? Like that's why we made this podcast, y'all. Y'all need to like yo. When we talk about some of this music that's out, some of y'all y'all, y'all gotta check this stuff out, yo. Yeah, just give it a yeah. Dope. Just go check it out and then pass the information on. That's another thing we don't pass information on. I feel like. Nobody wants to stand up and be that person that shares something corny or something that's not cool, you know. So it's cool to let me let me just screenshot and share or share what a time to be alive. Why not? Everybody else is doing it. Yeah, check out Joe. Check follow the Instagram man. The Instagram man, we be posting some stuff right. that ain't even necessarily mainstream and right. it's and it's dope. If you stuff. need direction, we here. You know what I'm saying it's not not saying that we know everything because there's people that put us on on things and then we go check it out, but then. That's the thing, you gotta have the open ear to check things out. And I'm not saying, you're gonna be biased at times. I'm biased myself. There's times that like Nino wants me to check out certain things or somebody may click on, send me a link and it's like, I try, but it's like, man, some something I can't, some things I just can't overlook. Like, absolutely, man. you didn't put no content into your name or, or or there's no reason behind it or even a cool story or make up something you know what i'm saying like oh i don't know man <laughs> yeah but man let's go ahead and wrap this up man that concludes drake week you know come check us out next week we're gonna be reviewing asap ferg's album always strive and prosper i'm assuming yep. that's what asap stands for in all them dudes names it might be uh we doing sean that's the name of the album that's the name of the artist that's a throwback why and e if you ain't heard we gonna be doing prince purple rain man rest in peace rest to the purple peace, one purple one rest yep. in peace and greatness and then uh we gonna be doing the highly critically acclaimed beehive special 
<laughs> lemonade, man. Lemonade. You know, we're going to take some lemons and make lemonade out of this right, joint. Right. Make sure y'all hit up the email, trc at the report car live.com. That is trc at the report car live.com. Check us out on Instagram, the report car podcast. And check out the closing, of course, at So Loyal Closing Inc. Um, also, check out So Loyal underscore Customs. That's my homie Nico. He does the dip um, on cars, he customizes cars. Um, yeah, man. Make sure you tune in. Yeah, man. And also, yo, check, yo, follow the Report Car Podcast on Facebook. And yo, go ahead and subscribe to us. We on iTunes. We on Google Music Play. We on Stitcher. We on SoundCloud. Right, and we're gonna right. be doing some special stuff for YouTube soon. Right. So everybody, go ahead and subscribe, man. Right. Definitely. To, uh, check us out, cause um, like 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 you just said, we're gonna do a little visual for y'all and um, let y'all in a little bit on on that creative process or you know what, yeah, what goes on. Of, behind the a whole scenes bunch or, of stuff whole bunch we, we might even do some exclusive reviews on on youtube you, you never know what you're gonna find on our youtube right, channel right. and, and we feel, gonna make sure we keep the content coming right feel free to like share and comment again man as we grow you know what i'm saying you, you guys are not fans as long as you guys showing us love you know you're part of the movement and um we hopefully soon start to get to the point where we could bring artists up and you know get their point of view on music or you know yeah man and on that note, man, peace. Peace. Y'all, y'all, y'all finished or y'all done? I ain't got no more talking. That's right.